Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Sade here. Today we're going to be doing a downstairs loo makeover. Now this is actually an extreme makeover, in my eyes anyway. It smells amazing, it looks amazing, it's so like vibey and moody, it's just everything that I need from a room makeover right now. So I'm hoping that you're gonna enjoy it as well. Now, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel because you will see a lot of content like this in the future. This is what I'm aiming to do on this channel, which is makeovers and makeovers and makeovers. Few hauls here and there, few other homey bits, but yeah, makeovers are gonna be the thing that I really wanna show you guys. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. And also I wanna give a huge shout out to I Am Fi who have kindly sponsored this video today and helped make this makeover a reality and they've also got a deal on 20% off at the moment and I think that's run until July 6th so head over and you might be able to save yourself 20% off which is amazing. So the before of this loo was pretty tragic I'm not gonna lie I mean it's not tragic it's a new build house okay so our house is literally an empty white shell when we moved in two years ago we managed to put up a mirror and some shelves and that was about it. For ages I didn't know what I wanted the downstairs loo to look like. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do. However, oh, love of my life, Lydia Millen, her downstairs loo, the original bougie bog, amazing. It was all the inspiration that I needed, okay? So I'm not gonna lie, I pretty much tried to rip her off here. I actually like barely tweaked anything that I changed, but no, I'm kidding. We did actually switch some stuff up. I didn't want to exactly copy her also because that cloud wallpaper is like 70 pounds a roll and didn't have the budget for that. So we did switch quite a lot of stuff up actually, but the general inspiration was definitely from Lydia Millen's Downstairs Lou, which really helped me because it set me off in the right direction. Now let's talk about mood boarding. Mood boarding is something that I've toyed around with before. It really helped me visualize how the final piece was gonna look. Now, this is something with me. Now, if you watched any of my other videos, especially my last hallway makeover, I literally said at the beginning of that video, I've done nothing for this. I've picked some paint and I've looked at an inspiration picture that I stumbled across on Pinterest and that is about it. And that is as far as my planning usually goes, which means that I end up having meltdowns and um, nearly on the verge of tears of crying because it's not gonna turn out how I wanted it to, even though I didn't know how I wanted it to turn out in the first place. Okay, make it make sense. Anyway, so this mood board helped me understand exactly what it was gonna look like and it actually made me really excited and really motivated to do it. Another thing that I did was a sketch of the loo. I wanted to try it for myself and see if I could kind of really get a, an actual visual for what this was going to look like. It really helped to solidify the idea to me and it made me so 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 excited. When I put it on my Instagram stories as well, you guys were just like, whoa, that looks insane, can't wait to see this. Top tip, get sketching, get mood boarding before you tackle a room because it will help tremendously. Panelling. This is a question I get on my page so, so much. So let's talk panelling. Okay, so the panelling that I did in my downstairs loo is more broadly known as wainscoting, I think. I call it half panelling. I think Americans call it like board and batten or something like that. There are so many different terms and there are so many different ways that you can do it. I did a really simple version. So I just used MDF. You can also use wood, um, but I've used MDF and I've just created some really basic rectangle shapes. Now, when I do my panelling project, I usually would go to B&Q and I would go and measure up and get some sheets of MDF and get them cut in store. B&Q offer a cutting service in store. At the moment, obviously with everything going on, they have reduced their services, so their in-store cutting service is not available. I just decided to go and find a local timber merchant who was still cutting um, and they delivered it straight to my door. So I ended up getting my delivery and all of my cuts and the MDF for about 50 pounds and it was delivered to my house and it was stress-free and I literally just then stuck them on the walls. The MDF that I usually use is nine millimeters thick. This for me is just the perfect thickness. I use MDF because it is a cheap material but it's very hard wearing. You can absolutely go in with wood if that is what you would prefer to do. I don't have any answers for what sort of wood that you can use and stuff because I've never dealt with that before. However, a simple Google I'm sure will help you out. I always get questions about what width panelling I do and I'm happy to share that information. It's no secret but what I want to do is put a caveat on the fact that 
that's what I have eyeballed for my room and what will look good. I tend to stick around the 10 centimeter mark, so that is my go-to, and then I'll decide, actually, if I was to put that panel on there, it would look too thick or it would look too thin, in case you are wondering. For the horizontal MDFs, which run around the skirting and around the middle of the room, they were 10 centimeters wide, and for all of the vertical panels, they were eight centimeters wide. Now, when it comes to how wide of a gap you should leave between each of those MDF panels. Again, this depends on what you are aiming for, what obstacles there might be when you come to be sticking these on the walls, things that you have to maneuver around, what sort of vibe you want. It's really just more of a preference thing. I went in with 30 centimeter gaps. When I am doing a project like this, when it comes to paneling, I will always draw stuff out. I've drawn a floor plan here. I've got my door at the base. I've got my toilet up here. I've referenced things like my radiator and the sink. And then I've just jotted down all of the measurements of all of the walls and all the measurements of the panels and all of that good stuff if you have got another question feel free to put it down in the comments i will get back to you head over to my instagram look at my highlights i've saved so much information in there about all of my paneling projects i know there's going to be something that i've missed out or i've not actually covered that you want to ask so head over and ask me those questions and i will happily answer them for you okay let's finally get on to the making of the downstairs loo i'm so excited i hope you guys enjoy it make sure that you are drop me likes and comments. I really, really want to know what you think and I'm so excited. So I decided to try a new product when it came to adhering the MDF to the walls. That was the No More Nails original formula. Now I usually use the green grip fill. But I wanted to try something new. I used it to create zigzags down the MDF. You'll see here, I'm not using a lot. Now that was a mistake on my behalf. This is slightly more watery of a formula than the grip fill. The grip fill is really thick. So I didn't put enough on to adhere this. So I actually had to take it off and do it again. But when I realized, you'll see on this one, that I actually packed on a lot more each time. I added the MDF to the walls and it stuck really, really well. Now, when you're using this stuff, you wanna make sure at least one of the walls is porous and that means that it is gonna absorb the glue and it's gonna to help to bond everything together. Now at this point, so I'd done all the skirting joints, then we needed to put on the middle of the room joints. I got Rob's help here, it is a long piece of MDF and I wanted to make sure that it was at the right height so that we could slot in all the panels and we use those to prop it up and keep it in place and that was so easy to do rather than trying to stick it in the right place. As you can see, it lined up absolutely perfectly, always making sure that everything lined up perfectly. I am a Virgo, perfectionist is my middle name. One of my middle names, I'm Nigerian, I actually have like four middle names. But <laughs> yeah, perfection is my thing. So I needed to make sure everything was joined up perfectly and making sure that you are meticulous when measuring really helps with this. Just a little close up of exactly how we do that, showing you exactly how much of that adhesive we used. And this part was really easy because we'd used all of those to prop it up. It was literally like fitting a jigsaw, just slotting those pieces of MDF in place. Just coming to you with a little tip here. So where I have made these markings and I've said panel's gonna go here, I've done it with pretty much every single panel that I've put up now. I've been able to just slot them in place because I've literally just made markings that I've said put the panel here. So um, I would advise doing that after you've done your measurements, go round and mark out exactly where the panels are gonna drop. That way, again, you've got confidence that it's gonna be correct. Put it on the wall, stick it in place, and then all done. Okay, a little progress update for you guys. I am so happy with how this turned out. It actually wasn't too difficult to do. I had to get some help from Rob to put some of the longer bits of MDF just because it's easier with two people. You'll be able to see some of the joints and um, they have little gaps. So this tiny little gap here, we're gonna go in with some polyfiller now and fill it and then down the sides, you might be able to see down here, there's a slight gap if that will focus. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cork that. What I'm gonna probably do now is start to polyfill. I'm glad that I don't have too many crazy gaps, but there are a few. So I will take you through and I'll show you what I do with that as well. Okay little update, this stuff, probably not the stuff to use. Now, the word flexible didn't really like register in my head. So it's more of like a silicone-y sort of finish, very rubbery, sands a little bit, not a lot. I'm really glad that I didn't put loads and loads of this on because one little part where I did at the bottom, nightmare to got off. So yeah, I would probably actually stick to the five minute one 
even though it's a little bit more difficult to work with it's definitely easier to sand off okay now time to caulk the edges i always get questions as to why you use caulk and polyfiller um, for different things now i don't know if this is actually a thing but from my understanding the polyfiller fixes gaps between the mdf so between the like the verticals and the horizontal panels themselves whereas the caulk is used to give a more professional and smooth finish between the wall and the mdf but yeah this is what i do i move slowly that is a tip from me because if you go too quickly you will end up breaking off that caulk move slowly and use a tool like this this is literally two pounds from like bq home base the range whatever this helps to smooth that out rather than your fingers i'm hoping that you can see here but it's basically smoothed everything out to get the perfect perfect finish i always use a damp cloth and i just run it down along everything don't be worried that you're going to wipe all of your hard work off here you absolutely don't i am really quite rough with this when i do it because it gives me the most smooth and effortless finish ever so and it just takes all the excess off and it kind of like wipes it down so you don't have to go in and sand it afterwards once i was finished that it was time to remove all of the accessories from the room the old accessories that were getting replaced Woohoo! so i just took down that mirror i took down all of those god awful accessories that I don't know what on earth I was thinking was styling that loo <laughs> you ain't fooling anyone and I took down those shelves as well because we were going to replace those now what this did leave underneath was a lot of holes that I had to go in and polyfill ready for the wallpaper as you can see here me and Rob are working as a team to mix up this wallpaper paste because it's extremely hard to get it to not be lumpy so if you work as a team and you slowly add the wallpaper powder in whilst really vigorously mixing it it gives you the most smooth paste ever this is the wallpaper that i decided to go in with if you're interested that is the gray glitter wallpaper from wallpaper sales i love this wallpaper it was so thick the quality was amazing and i just started off by measuring the first piece that i needed i don't know what happened here i had a bit of a like mind trip i forgot how to wallpaper so i cut it to the exact size that i needed and then i was like wait this isn't what you do so yeah i kind of like fit that part in and as you can see i'm just applying that wallpaper paste making sure that i've hit everything but yeah i ended up like cutting this to the perfect size so it just fit in that gap rather than like overlapping and then cutting it down so yeah bit of a mind blip but anyway my tip is that i use a car ice scraper really helps to remove any of that extra wallpaper paste and it just smooths everything out i then go in with a damp cloth to remove the wallpaper paste that is accidentally got on top of the wallpaper because you don't want it to dry and then start showing on top the difference between applying just the one sheet and then applying another one is that when you fit it down you want to make sure that they're touching entirely all the way down and you want to make sure that your pattern matching now this was the first time i've ever pattern matched and my god it took so long but it was so worth it but it took so long i made sure i squished it as closely together as it would possibly go and it was in line and i used a roller tool now the roller tool is really really handy because there's only so much you can push it against the wall to make it stick on those joints without you seeing the gaps between so that roller really helped to um solidify those joints i know that sounds really weird but it just really really helps so i would definitely invest in one of those i think they're like two three pounds when it comes to cutting i always use a really sharp stanley blade and a meter metal ruler and I just kind of slide it across the top and then it peels off I guess it just takes time and practice doing this and knowing the right amount of pressure to put in and all that stuff because it can be really difficult after all of that was done and the paste was dry I then went over and masking taped the whole area ready for painting this is something that I like to do I've said on my channel so many times I prefer masking tape in an area off than trying to cut in with just a free hand and a paintbrush because nobody's got time for that so I just literally go in and it gives me the cleanest sharpest lines ever now this is the paint I was using. This looks really grey um, when you first pour it out but it dries to a really deep solid black and that is what I wanted. I wanted it to be the deepest darkest black shade ever and I was a bit worried at first. I was like oh it's not going to dry very like dark is it but then you come back after an hour or two it's so dark. So yeah just taking that on a really cheap roller. I don't have any really proper posh rollers or brushes or anything like that. Nothing more to say than that then we gave it about three or four coats I think. The 
The final day for me was just adding the accessories, which I was so excited for. I decided to add a floating shelf underneath my circle mirror that I got from Homebase. This is from the Sanoma range. Again, I will link it down below. Everything that I'm using, I will link down below. Then went on and added a circle mirror. This circle mirror was from the range. This mirror was 22 quid, like bargain. And I know Dunelm do a similar one, but I think they've got a thicker band around the outside. I just really liked that this one was so like, it was just gorgeous. I just really, really liked it. Didn't get a camera shot of this for some reason, but I went in and I installed the shelves behind the toilet. I then finally went on to install little accessories like the toilet roll holder and the hand tail rail. Hand tail rail? Hand towel rail, anyway. That loo roll holder was a bargain from Amazon. I'll link it down below for you guys. So I managed to get the hand towel rail from Facebook Marketplace a little while before, and I knew I wanted square black accessories in that room, so I found one on Amazon to match. I think it gives it a really sleek finish. So yeah, I'll link that down below for you, and I'll find a similar hand towel rail for you as well. Now, as I said at the beginning, Fi, I am Fi, sponsored this video, so thank you so, so much to them. And I just wanted to show you the prints that I decided to get. I wanted some wall art that was actual art. It wasn't just a normal print that you can get everywhere. It was actually, it looked like art and I wanted something really simple, kind of monochrome that fit the whole vibe of the room. And I wanted it to be kind of like statement and something that I hadn't seen before. And when I stumbled across these three wall art pieces on their website, I was like, these are what I need. And I decided to get them in the black frames and they came and they're just, perfect they came no damage they were packed so well i just had to take the cellophane off them and when i showed them on my instagram as well so many of you were like i love them i've never seen something like this before absolutely love them and loads of you guys as well told me that you'd bought some other stuff because you guys didn't even know that fi like i am fi existed so go and look at their website i'll link it down below for you because so much incredible stuff there like i cannot explain to you it's proper like artsy like it's a really different sort of website so if you're looking for really different pieces definitely go and check them out but yeah thank you so much to five sending those over you really sealed the deal with the bathroom okay up until now i have not shown you what the entire bathroom looks like i made sure when i was filming to show like little bits and pieces because i didn't want to give it away i mean if you follow me on instagram you know what it looks like by now but yeah i wanted to do a big reveal because honestly I cannot believe the difference between the before bathroom, which was plain white and boring, and it just all blended into each other because everything was white and silver. And now, this is what the bathroom currently looks like. I honestly cannot put into words how much joy I'm filled with every time I walk in there. Sometimes I even forget because I've lived here for two years and I'm so used to going in that loo and it just being boring and white. I open the door and I'm like, oh, Oh my God, whose bougie bug is this? <laughs> So yeah, I absolutely loved doing this makeover. But yeah, let me know what you thought of this makeover. All of the accessories in the bathroom are gonna be linked down below if they still exist. I'll make sure to go on and research those for you. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video, guys. I had so much fun making it. I just wanna say thank you for watching. I absolutely so appreciate the support at the moment. Please go and follow me on Instagram as well if you want more like daily updates and little mini hauls and just what I'm up to in general. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye. That uh, towel roll. Why do I keep getting this wrong? That loo roll holder. That loo roll holder. <laughs> oh, here we go. Is he coming? Is he coming? Is he coming to us? Yes, he is. BRB. What am I trying to say? But yeah, we. But yeah, we just went. But yeah, I just went in with a really. Be stoked. Are you stoked? Are you stoked? Are you stoked? Don't know. Anyway.